Hi there. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going through um, how to fix conflicts um, for your pull request. Um, in the last video, I was working on a dummy pull request, um, but actually, uh, for this video, I've decided instead to focus on fixing conflicts for some existing pull requests, um, which quite nicely show you um, the variation in complexity whereby some pull requests can be resolved purely in the browser. Um, others then need to be, well, some don't have any conflicts at all, others can be resolved in the browser, and finally some cannot be resolved in the browser, and this is then when you need to do it uh, by the command line. Um, and in this case, we actually have a script which we've created in the repository, which you can then run, which will try to do the merging conflicts for you, but um, will then give you the option to fix the conflicts manually um, in the command line, um, by the command line. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, so I've actually got some um, pull requests open already. So to start with, we've just got one here where it's not necessary. So um, it can automatically be merged with no conflicts with the base branch. So this is great. Um, the changes are not conflicting with anything that's been changed since the PR was made. This is probably for one reason because it was made very recently. Um, this may change if this PR is not merged quickly, then it might be the case that upstream changes quite a lot. And if this happens, then it may actually become necessary again to resolve some conflicts. So we will try our best to, um, to get new pull requests integrated quickly. But if it does take us a bit of time, then you may need to resolve some conflicts which arise because of that. Um, so taking another example, here, um, where there are some conflicts, we can actually just go ahead and do this in the browser directly. So this is quite nice. Um, you can also do this from the command line, which is totally fine, but I'll just do this example in the browser. Um, so there's just a conflict under data type. Um, what it takes us to is a file which has this format. And if you're not familiar with it, then I can very quickly explain. Um, basically, um, we have, um, so yeah, so we have the version which is in the current branch um, of the fork, which the pull request is um, referencing. Um, and then in the other version here, we have what's in master, what's in upstream. So essentially what Git has been unable to do, it's found one that has this in this part of the file, one that has this in this part of the file, and um, it's asking us, hey, which of these do you want? Do you want both? Do you want one or the other? And then we essentially need to just leave behind what we want. We need to delete these three and leave behind whatever we want. Um, in this case, essentially this is quite simple because all we've done is added tupo to this. So, um, I mean, we can go ahead, do this, and then delete all of this, and this will be the correct um, conflict resolution. Um, here, there's one method added in one, one method added in the other. Quite simple, we just want both of them. So let's go ahead and just delete these. Um, yep, so that's done. I think that was all there was. We can mark as resolved, commit the merge, um, and the conflict's resolved. So that was very quick and easy, and we can do that entirely in the browser. Uh, okay, so we now have another pull request here, stack. Um, and unlike in the previous case, where we were able to resolve the conflicts in the terminal, sorry, in the browser directly, now we can't do that because the conflicts are a little bit more complicated to resolve. Um, so in this case, we're going to do this by, by the command line. Um, so first of all, I'll quickly just see where it is. It's the master branch of this repository. So I'll get that cloned locally. Um, I'll just go into a PRs folder. Um, we'll clone this into a user specific directory. Um, and then it was the master branch. Um, yeah. And the first thing that we can do, um, well, I can tell it's wait for it to download first. Um, but the first thing that we can do is um, run a script that is in the repository, which is called merge with upstream. 
that attempts to go through um, the process for you and will automatically do it if it's possible without needing to um, without needing to manually fix conflicts. But in this case, we know that's not the case. We know that we will have conflicts to fix, but we can still go through the process. Um, so what this script does is it, um, first of all, checks out the branch that the pull request is referencing, which in this case is master. Then we add upstream. Um, then we fetch upstream. Then we merge upstream into the current branch, upstream master into the current branch and then we push the merge. Um, in the case where there are conflicts, this line will um, essentially return telling us that there are conflicts to fix, and what we will then have to do is manually fix the conflicts, then add our changes, commit them, and, oops, and, push, um, and push the changes, which is what we're gonna have to do now. But, so I'll just go now through this master, and let's watch Watch it unfold. And we have conflicts, as we suspected. So I'm gonna quickly, um, actually sorry, open up a different one, so that was, uh, this one is where we're going to. Um, so let's now find the conflicts and get them resolved. Um, so, um, where are our conflicts? We have okay, a modified delete where um, IV functional um, array API manipulation functions deleted in master um, and it's left in the tree. So um, this is actually because of a refactor whereby we have actually now in upstream removed this folder array API entirely and we've moved the manipulation functions.py into a um, file called manipulation.py directly under this folder. So um, this is just essentially refactoring that when you look at the commit history, you'll see that we've moved all of these array API, all of these files directly into this folder. Um, this folder has been removed, array API has been removed, and the underscore functions has been removed from many file names. So this is then essentially what we need to do. The changes in the um, branch on the fork were done in the old convention, so we're just going to need to copy those over to the new file um, and then delete these old files. Because, um, yeah, just to say again, we can see this was deleted in master, but it was modified in head, so um, and it's left in the tree for now. So, um, and just to recap, the, the um, pull request is for the method stack. So this is what the pull request is addressing. Um, so I'll just put this again on the, on the left, put on the left and put this on the right. So let's first do it for uh, this file here. So this has been left, so we go IV functional IV, um, array API manipulation, functions.py, um, and um, the method that has been added is stack. So we can take this, um, I think that's just overflowing yet, we can take stack here and copy it, and then we can add it into the correct file, which is manipulation.py. Um, we can add it, let's just add it at the bottom. Um, Again, you might prefer to do this in IDE. I'm just using gedit for now. Um, okay, and yep, yeah, it looks good. Don't think there's any import problems. Just like tuple union list, tuple union list. Um, yeah, obviously if you do this in an IDE, you'll actually get flags for the errors, but I think it looks good. Um, cool, okay, so that's that done. Let's save this one and let's delete the other one which was here everything under here can be deleted okay so that's the first conflict done we can then do the exact same thing for um well for torch and for tensorflow and for numpy and for mxnet and for jack so it's for all of them um so let's just blast our way through and um, let's do jacks first let's take 
uh, stack. This is the only one that we're concerned uh, with because I, I believe this is the only thing that's changed in the PR that I, they should not have added flip as well. It's just stack. So um, the flip will have already been refactored and moved to the correct place. So yeah, just stack. Um, so again, I normally have three screens, not one. Um, you know, I'm trying to get it all onto one screen record. Um, so yeah, so sorry, let's take stack. Uh, let's close this and let's add it into manipulation. Dot pi. Let's just um, add it at the bottom. It's okay. Okay. Nice. And let's delete this. Now let's do it for MXNet. Let's take a stack. Yeah, I don't need to save it. Um, manipulation. Pi. Let's add it at the bottom again. Okay, um, yeah, let's delete this, uh, and then NumPy, again I do apologise for this recent refactor that, um, that made all of this necessary. Unfortunately every now and then there are going to be refactors that occur that do cause conflicts with existing PRs, um, so these kind of conflict mergers will conflict resolutions will be necessary immediately, immediately before merging the PR. Um, I wouldn't obsess too much about keeping constantly up to date. Um, I think as long as the test pass in your own fork and branch, then when we actually merge, we can fix these conflicts. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is the NumPy one. Cool. And then this. Um, two more to go. Okay, and then finally, torch. Um, okay, nice. So I think that's good. Um, so I'll just add all of this. Um, and then commit saying merge with upstream and we should now just be able to push this and we have, amazing. So now we've merged it with upstream um, um, so hopefully now if we go uh, yeah if we go on to our uh, fork here just reload that. Yeah, merge with upstream push 27 seconds ago. Again, I do have the right access to this um, fork because of the pull request, which gives the maintainers of the upstream repository right access to the right access to the particular branch on the fork that the PR references. And in this case, it's master. So if we now go to the conversation, um, again, we should then see my commit on the PR and we see that it has no conflicts with the brace base branch and the tests are all now running, which they were unable to do before the PR, uh, before the conflicts were um, resolved. Um, so that hopefully is a useful overview of the various ways of merge, of, of fixing conflicts. Um, sorry, quite tired. Um, in the simplest case, um, you can do this directly in the browser by clicking merge conflicts. Um, this is what you should always do if you can. If you can't and it says, sorry, this is too complex, you need to do this um, from the terminal, which is typically the case if files have been deleted in upstream, which you have modified in your own branch, which was the case this time because a refactoring did a, a file name change, which, wasn't, which Git wasn't able to detect and track. Um, so this, these kind of issues will mean you need to do it in the terminal. Um, but hopefully this was quite useful to show you how you can then go about doing this. 
Um, if it's not obvious why some files are there and some are deleted, then always feel free to ask questions to the IV team account on Discord or on the public chats on Discord also, um, or create a discussion perhaps. Um, but I, I think if you look at the commit history, you, you should normally be able to get a sense of what refactoring has happened and, and where the correct new location is, um, as we've done in this, in this short video. Well, I'm not sure how short is that short. Um, anyway, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.